Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm at uh, Team Priest Studio in Grand Rapids and I'm working on this beautiful and elegant Scots Pine. This tree is uh, a beautiful example of uh, a garden growing uh, Scots that was uh, a farm growing for many many years and then uh, transforming to a bonsai. Obviously here in US, uh, Scots is not a native tree, but there are people that from many years uh, grow these species and uh, in my opinion is one of the best uh, pine to create a beautiful bonsai. Beautiful old bark, uh, nice small leaves uh, and uh, the capacity of densify the pads uh, very very well if we, if we perform uh, nice pinching and uh, cleaning along the growing season. You can see this tree we can consider a very mature bonsai, probably it was a little bit let grow for the last few years, uh, it got uh, over dense, uh, some branches grew too much and it's time a little bit to restyle this tree. So we have always to consider the background of the tree and how the tree look uh, uh, now, before deciding eventually to remove some branches, uh, change some directionality of some structure, and eventually uh, restyle the tree, changing its shape. I always like to respect uh, the previous, the past uh, of a tree, but always looking forward, uh, trying uh, to really highlight uh, the good points of the tree and eventually hide uh, some of the little defect. When we look at this tree, we have uh, a beautiful transition in the trunk. Uh, now some of the branches uh, became uh, very, very strong. Uh, you can see especially this was the old uh, the front of the tree, uh, but we have some branches that are extremely big uh, and they are basically covering too much uh, the elegance of the tree. Considering this tree like a, in a feminine style, I wanna really reopen uh, the spaces uh, in order to give back uh, that flavor to the trunk and the nice and old ramification. So probably some of these branches uh, will be transformed in gin uh, to be able to bring down uh, some of the upper branches that are a little bit more compact uh, and will help me to create more negative space uh, in the tree. Also, this is the first branch of the tree that is uh, subdivided uh, in uh, many different parts. I still need uh, to reorder a little bit that ramification to create more stepping, more rhythm between the pads. Eventually see if I can uh, uh, a little bit change uh, the line of the branch. At the moment this branch is very horizontal. I want to try to push it down maybe using a guy wire and then start uh, reopening the branches. So on this type of work, uh, I don't like uh, to cut uh, already what I don't, uh, I think uh, I don't need, uh, but I will start uh, already uh, stepping up uh, and uh, uh, basically styling from the lower pads up. Uh, and while uh, I go up uh, with my styling in a circular way, I will see if I need some branch, uh, if I can eventually remove and transform to a gin some of these uh, frontal branch or eventually move away to see a little bit more the trunk but I would like to do it step by step. This helped me to be more perfect on uh, my choices and not rush uh, cutting some branches and maybe at the end of the story think uh, I need them.
I start uh, putting some uh, structural wire on the branches uh, in order to, after all, uh, reset the pads. Uh, and then uh, now I'm doing uh, a little bit of uh, needle cleaning. Uh, it's very important uh, before the fine wiring, uh, remove uh, the old uh, needle so I can reach out uh, the tips uh, with the fine wire in order to have a nice uh, and a clean uh, refinement uh, and also in part like this uh, where we see the tree build up uh, uh, too much strength uh, we have to identify which branches uh, are the strongest one uh, and eventually you see go back uh, and prune them uh, in order to go back to some of the weaker one the smaller one the finer one uh, that uh, will make the energy of the pad uh, equal uh, after we especially after we style so i prune uh, some of the dominant uh, like here for example and then uh, while uh, i wire and set the pad i can even go more and eventually even select uh, some of uh, the triple end uh, if uh, there are and uh, be sure that all the energy is equally redistributed uh, all over the fine, uh, nice uh, little branches. I just finished wiring this section of the tree that will give me the directionality of the branch and then uh, anchoring to the wire down in the bottom of the base uh, and up here I change a little bit uh, this section pushing for like a couple of centimeter one inch uh, this section down uh, and uh, highlight the directionality here so now I can also sacrifice uh, this branch uh, that is in the lower position and come uh, from a crouch uh, inside here so this can go because i don't want to co have a competition with this guy and i have already a nice stepping up uh, between this uh, this section and this one so this was a weak branch underneath it can go and so now I have all uh, the structure I need uh, to create a nice uh, first pad and a good dynamism of the first pad of the tree.
just finished taking care of all these uh, sections. So my strategy was uh, primer wire, you see, not so thick, and it's just uh, to move a little bit the branches. So I use more or less the proportion one to five, one to six uh, from the wire to the branch size. And then uh, we push uh, all this section down a little bit uh, to gain uh, a little bit of dynamism for the transition between uh, the thick branch and down uh, to this, uh, that is the directionality pad. Even if it's all this is the sachieta, but the sachieta is subdivided in multiple little uh, branches, little pads. And as you can see then I was working my way out uh, wiring everything and cleaning uh, and now I just finished positioning uh, all the pads and creating uh, the beautiful rhythm uh, between uh, the sub pad uh, forming this area. So principal one, second and down uh, back uh, to create uh, this uh, nice rhythm always feeling the direction of the tree in this uh, side. Now I can work uh, on the back branch uh, that also come from here, but we're gonna push towards uh, the trunk with a little guy wire, create a couple of pads uh, so we can have uh, a nice uh, depth uh, here. That is where the trunk uh, create uh, the first uh, empty space uh, between uh, trunk uh, and pot. So this is uh, where the eye expect uh, to see the depth, okay? Very important. So now I'm gonna work on this uh, branch and then we take care of the upper part. So now that I finish all the lower part, uh, creating the first uh, movement of the pad and the good depth, uh, I have uh, to solve uh, this area of the tree. Very big uh, overgrow and uh, uh, doesn't allow the observer to see the nice uh, line of uh, uh, the trunk. So I have uh, basically a big uh, thick branch starting in this position. It's frontal, it's not a problem, but uh, this section for sure is too big so I go through and I remove it so I start uh, seeing better the trunk line then we have uh, this branch here that is a little bit weak uh, still uh, it could be a good step uh, between uh, this pad and up uh, but uh, it makes uh, this line of this uh, right pad look strange so I prefer to load down this section and create a better transition. So I also gonna remove uh, this branch, creating uh, a nice transition. Still, uh, we have this section that is a little bit bothering me. I know I have this uh, branch that could be a good uh, counterbalance pad. So what I will try to do while I wire this one with this one I will start pushing this back inside 
to kind of show a little bit more the trunk. I don't want to lose this pad. There is a good transition here and the back one. So I want to keep this section nice and compact, but was necessary to remove these three branches in order to go inside and see more about the elegance of the trunk. So I just finished to take care of this uh, left part. Uh, as you could see, I remove a couple of the frontal branches to open more the line of the trunk. Uh, and then with some uh, little structural wire, I move them out uh, and create uh, the connection between uh, these different pads. Uh, also pushing down uh, this uh, branch uh, in the back uh, to interconnect uh, the different pads uh, and create a nice uh, rhythm uh, to rebalance uh, the visual weight uh, I have to the right. Now, next step, uh, working on this area and the back uh, and then only the apex uh, to finish up the work. I just finished cleaning all this area, okay? So, we are coming up to the top uh, and as you can see the top is very, very strong, uh, obviously. So we need to rebalance uh, and plus uh, some of the branches uh, got uh, too strong and too thick. So here, for example, I have two nice branches in this position, this very big one here. So I'm gonna go through and remove this one because I have this one coming down from the top that is much compact and I can create a good balance between the three pads. 
rather than have this pad sticking out uh, very strong. Another branch that I'm thinking to remove is this other frontal one for the same reason it's a very big branch uh, good transition here so I can bring this part uh, down in this position I still have this one that is more compact uh, so this branch will be just a competition with uh, this section and even with the other section plus it's gonna still cover too much of the trunk so is another branch that I'm willing to lose okay when we restyle a tree especially after many years uh, this tree was probably let free to grow and eventually pinched uh, uh, casually for the last uh, three or four years uh, Scott is able to build a lot of strength uh, so some of the branches become too thick uh, and uh, obviously they create uh, too much green uh, and uh, is much better also to uh, rebuild the taper that we go back bring another branch down uh, and recreate uh, that compact green mass that we lost uh, uh, because the branch grew too much uh, and build up too much strength so it's much better to transform uh, now these two gin uh, to these uh, these two old branches in gin uh, and then uh, bring down uh, eventually something from the top to close uh, nicely the taper is uh, perfectly wired uh, I can start first of all positioning uh, the structure and then uh, again uh, here I start from the lower pad uh, and I set uh, my lines uh, around as uh, you could have noticed on this project I'm working from four layers I did all the lower right lower left now i'm working this area and then uh, i will subdivide uh, the apex uh, in two area and uh, clean uh, and work uh, them this uh, really helped me to have a better control uh, in terms uh, of uh, space that I'm using uh, with the branches uh, and create the good uh, connection plus uh, I can also uh, control uh, uh, technically the work uh, rather than wire everything together and then start uh, styling uh, I can do part by part uh, and these uh, also help me be more concentrate uh, on the area I'm uh, basically setting correct uh, positioning uh, of the pads uh, is always important uh, 
to have a nice uh, visual connection between uh, one area and another to create this uh, rhythm almost as uh, some of the pad pads uh, slowly and briefly uh, touch one to the other. This help uh, to create that visual connection that uh, we love to call a rhythm in bonsai. You see that where I cut uh, out these very strong brands now is uh, in negative space. Uh, that's why I also kept these uh, with the pad uh, going towards the front because I already plan to push down uh, this very big branch, uh, separate uh, into two or three other pads uh, and frame uh, this area. And here we are also the back pad uh, is done just with uh, the little guy wire and then reset everything in position. Now I'm gonna clean uh, this area and the frontal branch uh, and I will go to the next layer. Just remove uh, the needle from this area. Now before wiring I do also a little bit of pruning. There are some uh, branches that got too much strength so I have to go back, uh, prune, eventually also remove uh, some uh, weak one underneath uh, and prepare my pads uh, to be wired strong areas see also here this section is very strong so we're gonna remove we go on this branch this has to go down we have always to imagine where the branch will go and then understand if we have to prune some area here we are a little more cleaning Are some branches uh, underneath uh, that I'm removing uh, here. This is a strong uh, end uh, also can go. Okay, and eventually some more pruning I can still do while I wire and position. So now I wire these two section and uh, position them.
So I just finished setting uh, this entire pad, pushing down an anchor into this gin uh, to really frame uh, the area that was empty because uh, I remove uh, the very thick branch uh, under here. And now the next uh, will be to push down uh, the frontal pad uh, and basically close this area. I'm not really a big fan uh, of this uh, kind of a neck uh, inside uh, where most of the branches uh, uh, start. So uh, also taking chance of the twist that was done uh, originally in this direction. I can push this branch down create another couple of sub pads and then still have uh, green enough uh, to close my triangle and have a nice uh, and a little bit more open uh, top uh, that match with the elegance of the tree. So I just finished wiring the top of the tree. Uh, now I will still uh, put a couple of uh, guy wire to low down some areas like this branch here and fill this negative. Uh, and then uh, I will set uh, in position all the rest. Uh, luckily, I have uh, many branches in the top. I did uh, some uh, uh, pruning back, probably some more uh, I will be doing while I'll uh, style the top to have a kind of this nice and round uh, apex. And uh, at the end, uh, I will uh, still look at the overall uh, of the tree to have a nice uh, proportion, nice rhythm through the pad, and the work will be done. You whip up my appetite. Don't leave me here and dry. Remember guys, when you work on trees during winter uh, inside of your workshop and maybe there is some heating, uh, it's better to, after the work at least, or even during the work, uh, spray the foliage of your trees uh, because uh, foliage uh, can dry out uh, fast in winter and especially never put the tree back outside directly because the change, drastical change of temperature can burn the leaves. So if you work on the tree, store in a cold frame and then eventually you move back outside or if you do a lot of work like bending and stuff like that, it's always better to keep in a cold frame during winter so the tree don't have any problems. And here we are with the final uh, result. Uh, I think I was able uh, to really highlight uh, the beautiful elegance on, that tr on this tree, uh, showing uh, the old branches, uh, the movement uh, of uh, some of them, especially some of the back one, uh, going down, uh, typical of a very old uh, Scots pine. I thin out uh, the strong part. I remove actually four big branches, uh, you can see, four big uh, pads uh, that uh, you know uh, I had uh, on the tree originally and I don't uh, need it. This is almost a third uh, of the overall green of the tree but uh, sometimes uh, after many years of growth when the tree get over mature we have a little bit to go back, uh, simplify the structure, remove uh, the part that got too much strength uh, to redistribute everything uh, 
all over the canopy in order to bring back the tree to that old uh, beautiful look. So I think uh, this was uh, more or less the goal uh, for this uh, refinement uh, restyling. Uh, I think I really target at the point. Uh, I'm very happy probably next uh, spring uh, we can move this tree in a more suitable and feminine container, something probably oval, nice and old, uh, to again highlight uh, the feminine beauty of this uh, tree. Thank you so much for watching this video, subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for all your positive comments. See you at the next! It's been a fantastic 2022 of great bonsai all over the world. I want to wish you a happy new year for a great coming 2023, full of bonsai, full of new adventure and thank you so much for subscribing my YouTube channel.